Hi, this is Dave Philippi with FabCAD, and this is the first of a series of lessons on how to help you to greatly reduce the number of picks and clicks that you execute when you're trying to create drawings on the screen. And so one way that you can really speed things up is to customize FabCAD to the way that you do your drawings. So that's what we're going to look at today. So one of the things I've noticed with customers when I'm clicking on their computers and they don't use the right click too much when they're trying to find something that needs to be fixed. So for instance, if I go over here and right like for an example, if I right click on the command line, I get some stuff here. And one of the one of the things that comes up is the options box. In here there's a lot of things you can do to speed up things. For instance, if you regenerate a lot, and you notice the display resolution out of the box it's set for a thousand I have this set for ten thousand so by doing that I, I eliminate the amount, of non, the amount of times I need to regenerate you know if you're doing some arcs and circles and you zoom up and you have a lot of you know straight edges and then you click you have to go back and regenerate to smooth it all out that'll eliminate a lot of that okay and then the colors so some things in here uh, to have make your visual make your visualization better. Uh, for instance, in the newer versions of our program, we have now what's called a rubber band. And in 2018, you can now change the color of that because the, the default color was like a light, real light orange, and sometimes it wouldn't show up on different screens. So well, you'll see that when we're doing some stuff that having a, a magenta rubber band makes things. A lot easier to see so it just speeds things up. Uh, there may be other things in here, different colors that are more, appeal to you more that you can you can change. You can change the color of your crosshairs, your backgrounds, all that good stuff. Open and save. 2018 has a new format but you may decide that you want to save everything as a 2013 because most of the people you're dealing with don't have 18 and you want to make sure that uh, you can communicate with them that they can open up your drawings. So instead of having to go through every time and go file and save as and pick 2013, you can make that your default save as drawing and then do it that way. So that saves you some time there. Under files, your template settings, you can automatically set those up. So when you do quick new, you can go through and browse and pick your template drawing. So every time you open up a new drawing, it will automatically open up the template that you're looking for. You don't have to go searching for it. Saves you a little time there. Under publishing and background, you know our stuff it doesn't have a whole lot of data in it. You know you can publish it. You can publish like five or ten sheets pretty fast without having to publish it in background. That just slows things up. So, and then here you can put your default printer. You can always set that up so it's always the same one and that we don't have to keep searching for things all the time. Not so much stuff in here, but you notice these little drawing icons? These mean that any any options that you change only apply to this drawing. So if you want it, everything else is global. So any changes you make in here will automatically work with every drawing that you open. But if you have an icon next to it in that particular setting, then what you'll need to do is when you, if you want to keep that for all your new templates, you'll have to save this drawing as a template file so that it'll carry over the setting. I don't know if you also notice they still digitizers, which I haven't seen one of those in 15 years. Um, they still support those. It's kind of crazy. Under user preferences talking about right click this little button right here right click customization turning this particular one on here you can set up everything where it repeats the last command or shortcut menu but if you turn on the top one you get the best of both worlds when you right click real fast it'll be enter if you hold it down for two and a half seconds it'll give you a shortcut menu so let me go ahead and demonstrate that for you right now so let's go in here and I'm just going to click OK so when I draw a line and right click fast, it's enter. When I draw a line and hold it down, then I'll get the fly out menu here. And this is what this is what it's set up out of the box. So what happens when it's when you're 
you're doing something. Every time you right click, you're going to have to click enter to to do enter, and that's that's just a pain in the neck. So you don't want to have to do that. So that eliminates that extra click. Now another thing that you can do to speed things up is to customize the shortcut keys that are in the, in the PGP file. So in later versions you can go in and you can edit your aliases. So this is Fabkiss, the PGP file. This basically sets up parameters for different commands. So for instance under here we have C is copy and you can put in, you can create your own shortcut keys for different commands that you use all the time. So like what's E? E's erase and you've got, you can see the different commands they have in here. So say for instance you want to change C to be circle. Well you can change it right here if you want but if you want to keep your existing or the original PGP file intact you can just make it go down to the bottom and put make it the last command we set up down here C is circle because whatever whatever the, whatever the last command is at the bottom of the list that's what FabCAD will use as its shortcut key so you can add other shortcut keys for different other things okay so we save that the only other thing you have to be concerned about is when you save and make changes in, to that PGP file that only all the all the changes that you made aren't activated until FabCAD restarts but if you want to try to avoid restarting all the time then you can go in here where it has a command called reinitialize reinitialize R-E-N-I-T so I can reinitialize the PGP file without having to reboot FabCAD okay other items down here at the bottom you click on this that customization you see all these different items that are across the, the status bar here so things like uh, coordinates if you draw a line you notice at the bottom here at the coordinates is telling you how long it is as you go so that may be a helpful thing if you don't want that you can just go in here and turn that off so that is located here under coordinates, your ortho mode, all, all you have all that. You can add line weight if you want to put that in there. Having the units fly out here is good because if you go in here and I draw a line and I go uh, four feet two, hit enter, it's not working because I've got my unit set for fractional. But I can, on the fly, I can go in and change it to architectural and go four feet to and then it draws a line four feet to other things like when you go down to these buttons at the bottom you right click on these and then there's a dynamic input settings so you can go in here and you can change the size of the box the size of the text for your dynamic input boxes okay right click on here and you can pick all your different snaps right click on this and you get line weight settings you can make sure that it displays line weight now you notice we have it set up to display line weights and it's unique to this drawing so if you don't if this is not checked if you you do set line weights and you can't see them then you need to go in and display them and then save this drawing as a template drawing so the next time around you'll see it on the screen so you right click on all these different things you find all kinds of stuff here like here's the graphics performance you can go in here and when you right click you'll get other options so using the right click can come in pretty handy so I'll right click here and I can find other options here also you can do things on the fly right click on the text okay same thing here properties and you get the properties that come up show you everything that you need to know about that text a few other time savers here when I right click on this bar down here I see where it says select all layouts so I select all the layouts and then I right click on the layouts and I can publish all of them at one time so there they all already listed I don't have to go through and pick them go through all that publish routine and here again I got the publishing background unchecked but if you care to do that you can always check it back on and go with that also I can go in here and I can bring in a new layout so let's say you're doing a drawing for a contractor and they want to use their layouts with their logos you can bring that in real easy into an existing drawing 
by just going up here and inserting that layout. Now, it says from a template, but you can also do a drawing, or DXF for that matter. So let's do the drawing. And then I'm going to go down here, pick this, you open it, gives you the layout tabs. I want that layout tab right there. And that'll insert that layout tab into this drawing, and there you are. You got the information for the contractor right there, all ready to go. You can start moving right along with putting all the viewports on there and detailing this with their logo. You can bring all the kinds of other kinds of elements into a drawing too. So I can do that through the library. So if I click on library here, and I'm going to go up to gates. So if I double click on this, it opens up what's inside this. So like blocks, I can just drag and drop a block in from that file. Dimension style, I can do layouts also. There's layout one. I can drag that in. There it is down here at the bottom. You can drag in line types, leader types, text styles, dimension styles. So if you have something from another drawing that you want to use an existing drawing, you can use the design center feature of our library and just just drill down into the drawing itself and it gives you all the different components to make that drawing up, all the customization that's there, and you can copy customization from one drawing to the other. You can also right click up here on the ribbons well, you right-click on the line here where the drawing tabs are, and you can save all, you can close all, you can open a new one, you can do all that right there. You right-click on the ribbons, you can show the panels, you can add panels uh, that you want to use, like if you want to use a layer panel that you have there, you just right-click and it brings it up. Or if you want to clean up your ribbon area, you can right-click and just un uncheck it, like that. On the Quick Access Toolbar up here, you can right click on this and you can remove product you can remove commands from it you can add separators you can actually show the ribbon below you can show this toolbar below the ribbon if you want to get there quicker of course you lose a little screen real estate when you do that so then you can go in and I can right click on any command here and I can actually add that to my quick access toolbar so there I've just added a command you can go through and pick all kinds of commands that you want to add. You can go all the way across the top of this screen and do all your custom whatever commands you want. So you could actually, you got some here, you can also click on, and this will open up the customized user interface. You can, and all the commands that exist, you can click on these and add these to the quick access toolbar right here. So to summarize, when in doubt, right click on it. You never know what you're going to come up with. Take care. Bye.